Hey, this is Rene. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And today I want to work on the control panel again. There was a previous video where I explained how we create this app dialog. If you haven't watched it, you should go back and watch it because otherwise you will not be able to follow uh, along um, with what I want to teach today. So today uh, we want to add some more stuff to this application. So first of all, we will change the look of it. And in the next video, we will then add some functionality to it. So <clears throat> if we go back to the classes for creating control panels and dialogues um, article in the MQL5 reference, we will find not only the C app dialog that we use now, but we will also find some other controls like simple controls like C button, C edit, and so on and so on. And you can see this is really great because if we just open this C button link, <clears throat> you will find a exact explanation with all the um, useful functions or methods that this control features. And also you will find how it will look if you use this button for your program. So let's try and add a button for our own program. So what we can do here is we can add, uh, we can say C, uh, wait, C button. Oh, no, this was stupid. We of course first have to include the file. So include controls, um, I think it's just button MQH. And you, again, you can find all of these MQH file or, or include files in the controls folder in your include folder. <clears throat> so once we included this, we should be able to create a C button. And we can say something like button one. And now what we can do is we can say, and this is really similar to the, to the line that we had here before. We can now say button one, create, and you can see all of these, or I think, I think all of these uh, control objects, they all have the create function that you can use to create the object in the chart. And we can now say we want to create in the chart zero, we will have a name. And I mean, you could, again, you could add the name here, or you could say that you just define it here button one name, something like this. And we can say button uh, one. Yeah, I don't know. The name is not really relevant here right now. Button one name. Then we have the sub window zero. We have the coordinates and we can choose something like zero, zero. And then we have the width and the height. And we could also define it somewhere here. We could say, uh, Oh, oh, wait, we could also choose something like um, zero plus, and then we say panel width divided by two, and then we can have zero plus, and then we could define a row height or something here. Row, row height, something like this. This is what I do really often that I just define the row height for all of the controls inside of a panel um, at the very top. And then I can just use this row height here to define the height of a uh, object. So if we compile this, you will see that um, if we run the program in the chart, we, oh wait, we see nothing. Oh yeah, we see something. So what we see here is, we can see we still have this uh, C app dialog and we also have a button. We can also press the button, nothing happens of course, but the button is located in the upper left corner of the chart. And this is, um, oh yeah, we can also find the button um, here in the list. There is button one, this is the button that we just created. But this is not really what we wanted, right? Because in the best case, the button would be located somewhere in the in the trading or in the in the control panel here. But it is not. It is just somewhere in the chart. And this is because we will have to add this button to the application or to the C app dialog um, 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 object variable here. So what we can do is we can say button one add, um, oh no, we say add, uh, app, add, and then we can add controls to this application. So if we add the button one to the application, and if we compile it again, we will now see 
yeah, somehow it closes my, my chart window every time. I think it's a bug. Maybe I have to restart my MetaTrader 5. But if we run the program again now, you can see the button is now located like relative to the um, demo application uh, control window here. So now the coordinates that we put here, like for X and Y and everything, they are still valid, but they are now relative to this demo application container here that we see in the chart. So it's no longer based on the like on the chart, on the overall chart, but now it's um, relative to the um, to the application. So if I change like um, if I move this to another position in the chart, like the the uh, app dialog window, and if I compile it again, uh, you will see that the button is still in the upper left corner of this um, app dialog window here. And yeah, so we can now go ahead and we could add some more buttons. We could say we want another button, button two maybe. And now we need a name for this button. It's button two, of course. And then we can pretty much just copy these lines. And now you can see the benefit of using the controls library or these include files because now it's really easy to add more and more um, things to your uh, to the to your control panel of course we will have to play a bit with the x and y coordinates for the second button so we would have to say that this one starts in the middle somewhere but if we compile it again now we should see that if we run the program we will see not only one button, but two buttons. Oh, this is not really great because I forgot to um, change the width here or the second um, uh, coordinate for the x-axis. So if we run the program again now, you should see that we will have still not two buttons. Wait, let me check this. So the x1 is panel width divided by two. Then we have the epsilon one, which is zero. Then we have x2, which is panel width. And I think this is correct, isn't it? Oh yeah, I think it cannot be displayed because we will have to, yeah, this is a little bit tricky um, because you can see like this um, container here, like the demo app overall window, it, it has this small border at the left and the right side. And this is, I think, two pixels wide. So if I try to place my button here, and if the button goes slightly outside of the uh, main drawing area in the middle, it will not be displayed. This is really important. And this is why um, we would have to add the the um, the border here. So what we can do is we can say panel width plus four here to make the app dialog a little bit bigger. I think um, the border is four pixels on each side. So I have to add plus eight here. And if I run the program again now, it should be just fine. So wait, where's the meter trader? Open it again. <clears throat> So let me open a window here, run the program. And yeah, you can see now that it displays both of these buttons and they are just next to each other and they look just fine. So um, yeah, so this is the first way to like uh, to align the buttons. There is another way which is maybe a little bit um, easier because you could also just go ahead and choose zero and zero for the uh, x2 and x and epsilon2 value. Let me do this real quick. And then you can go ahead and say button one with, and you can say um, panel width divided by two, and you can say button one height, and you say row height. And you can do the same for the second button with panel width divided by two, and you can say button two height, row height, 
like this. So if we compile this, the result should be the same. Oh wait, I forgot to put some zeros here, I think. So like this. So if I run it like this, if I run the program again, you should see that, yeah, it is still working and looks just fine. And also I think um, to like get rid of the problem that it closes the, um, uh, the chart always, you should add app.destroy to the on D init function. And in this case, I think it should not close the chart every time I recompile it. So let's check this, compile. And yeah, now it seems to work. It's not closing the chart every time. And yeah, still displaying the, the, the trading panel perfectly fine. So, okay, there are some more things that you can do. You cannot only change the width and the height of the button, but you can also change like the background color. Um, I think it's color background. So I could say color light green, green here. And I can say button two color background, color orange, something like this. And I can say button one text. I can say something like buy. I can say button two text, something like sell. And if we compile this, you can see it always like changes the appearance of the whole um, trading panel. So you can see once you set up this construct where you have this app dialog and you have your code to add like buttons and stuff, you can just copy it multiple times and add more buttons and you can change the appearance really quickly. So I could change, oh, I can create, for example, another button like button three and I can say, I define the name here, button three name button three, something like this. And I can just copy all of this, paste it here. And I could say, I want button three this time. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to exchange this. Um, I have to write button three instead of button two every time now. But the rest can stay pretty much, much the same. I could say close here, for example. I can say the color background is color, uh, I don't know. No, not another blue color, but... Um, golden, I don't know. I can choose whatever color, color I like. Um, maybe I choose the whole panel width this time as a width. And I want to change the X value. Uh, wait, no, I want to change the epsilon starting value. Um, um, wait, X is zero, epsilon is now row height because I want to move it like to another row. And if I compile this, we should see that the button is now below the first two buttons. And yeah, that's it. Also, I could make, for example, I could make the second button um, like the double height. And I can just do this like, this is really easy now since I have this, um... oh wait, multiplied by two since I have this raw skeleton for my program now. Also in the end, if you created all your objects, it's always a good idea to call the app run function because this will redraw all the objects and will make it look like easy, uh, like beautiful. Maybe I change this to color violet. So it doesn't really look like the, the sale button so much. Yeah, you can see, you can just play around with it and it's really easy, like once you have it, um, once you have this basic structure, you can play around with this really quickly. And also I could go ahead and say, I don't want buttons only, but I also want a controls, controls uh, edit, I think it is. So I could go here and say, see edit, edit, um, yeah, edit one maybe. Um, let me create a name for this, edit one name. Edit one, and then I can do pretty much the same. Um, I could just say um, edit one, create. I want to create it, of course. The name is edit one name, sub window is zero, x is zero, y is uh, row height multiplied by four now, I think. Then we, I don't know if I can change the width like this. Yeah, I can, panel width. 
and height will be row height, row height like this. And I want no background color and I want to add it to the application. So like this, I should create a edit. So let me compile this and let's see if we will see a edit here now. Yeah, it is there. Um, maybe change the starting Y value. And yeah, you can see now we have a edit here and we can actually type something here. And yeah, that's really cool, I think. I think we can also like, I think we also have a spin edit, I think, which is another, let's see, spin edit. Wait, edit. Wait, let me, let me read this. Yeah, it's a spin edit. Sp spin edit. So if we change this to a spin edit, the rest can stay pretty much the same. But now we should, mm, no, we don't, wait. Edit one value. Maybe we need a default value here for the spin edit. Uh, no, it's not there. So wait, let me check this. Maybe we need to define the min and max value. Edit one max value, like 100 or something. Let's see if it works now. Okay, so I played around with it a bit and figured out that somehow, I don't know, we cannot use the width and height function here for the edit, I think. Or maybe I would have to read into it more, but yeah, I just added the um, X2 and Y2 parameter here, and now it's looking just fine. So if we have a look at this in the chart, you can see it's actually displaying this spin edit now where we have this increment and decrement button, but still <clears throat> none of the buttons or edits here have functionalities. And this is something we will have to take care of in the next video. So we learned how to add more controls to our application here. And again, if you want to learn um, or if you want to add some different controls, you can always go back here to this uh, article in the MQL5 reference or on the MQL5 webpage and you will find all the available controls. And if you click on it, you will find um, a lot of different like um, uh, examples, how to use the program and everything. So if you just read through it, you will get a hang of it. So in the next video, we will learn how to add functionality to our program. And then we will make this program actually open and close positions. So stay tuned and um, yeah, subscribe if you are not subscribed already. Like the video if you like the content and make sure to, um, to watch the next video also. So in the end, have a great time and good trades. Bye bye.